Two, three, four. Run up your engine! If you noticed, Hearst Car Rental Company has filed for bankruptcy, and people are thinking, oh, maybe I can get a good deal on a used car from them. Well, I'm here to kind of throw that mistaken idea out the window. To begin with, I'm not a fan of buying rental cars. I rent cars all the time. When I fly and then rent a car and drive somewhere, I beat the heck out of them, so does most other people. The people that maintain them are generally younger guys at low-wage jobs. Don't do such a hot job. I've often rented cars and the lights were on. They shouldn't have been on a car that new because they just aren't maintained correctly. But on top of that, you're not going to get a good price anyways. Now, it might sound like a good idea because rental car companies get two-thirds of their income from renting cars at airports. Since the airport travel is down 97%, they're not renting hardly any cars, so they're not making any money. Hence, Hertz has filed for bankruptcy. But you have to understand something else. Hertz has filed for bankruptcy because they missed payments to the people who loaned them the money for the cars. They're borrowing money from other people. These cars are new cars, right? Year, two years old. Go out and try to buy a year or two year old car. You're never going to get a fantastic deal because too much money's owed on the back end. Somebody buys a car and they don't like it and say they want to sell it to you when it's a year old. They probably put a down payment and made payments. The payments that are owed if it's a one year old car are practically what you could buy a new one for if you paid cash. So you're not going to get a deal anyway. The only way it's going to be a deal would be a long way down the line that let's say Hertz goes bankrupt. And of course, that's a legal thing anyway, so probably still continue to do business. But let's say they went bankrupt and they'd get rid of all their cars. These companies loaning the money, right? It'll be their cars. Then they would have to figure out, what are we going to do with all these rental cars? If another rental car company didn't want to buy it and the other guys are all in the same, they would have to sell the cars. They are banks. Banks really are no good at selling used cars. I've seen that in my business for the years. I've had customers buy cars from banks when they repoed them. Sometimes they were junker because the guy who had the car knew it was going to be repoed, so he beat the heck and didn't maintain it. So, But sometimes they got really good prices because the banks aren't used car lots. They don't have pros selling them. They don't know what the money is going to go for, and they are generally go for a lot less. But that's not until it's been through the whole washing machine of bankruptcy, then that company decides to get these because that's their assets, and then they're going to try to sell them off. Then, yes, maybe there'll be a deal involved in it. That's way down the line. You see, I've had customers get screwed over by companies that say one was a construction company that I can think of off the top of my head. They owe this guy money. Construction company went bankrupt. So here come everybody in. They're bankrupt. Let's seize their assets. Well, they didn't have any assets. All they had was a name. Their furniture was leased. It was rented. The computers, the office space was rented. Even the Mercedes that the high wigs and the construction companies drove around in, those were leased too. So they go back to the leasing company. Don't think that you're going to get any kind of fantastic deal when bankruptcy comes up because generally that's not the case. Most things are leased, so they got to go through a whole legal thing, and then they're sold. Now, maybe six months from now, if there's still a big stink going on, maybe you could get a good deal then, because the market would be flooded with people trying to sell cars. The lease companies, hey, it might even get to the point that I would see this making more sense. If all these people loan them millions and millions of dollars, they might just say, heck, why don't we just release these cars and they could create a car leasing company or even start their own rental company. That's the thing. People always say, oh, this is horrible. This is bad. Everything that's happening. Sometimes it's like evolution. It's a good thing. The bad companies get weeded out and then come, people come up with new ideas and maybe they can succeed or other people fail. Sometimes companies like Hertz, they get so big, they can't react. Maybe other smaller companies can take parts of it and have smaller rental companies to make a profit that way without the gigantic overhead. You never know. Hey, I'm looking at the bright side on this one. Well, it was only a matter of time. Turns out that the 2021 Mercedes E-Class steering wheel, if you buy the highest class one, the fanciest, most expensive one, it will learn a lot about your hands. It's going to have two spokes in the middle and each of the four spokes have a bunch of buttons. But they're not just buttons, they're sensors, just like on a touchscreen. 
each one of those four spokes has an array of capacitive sensors. They can sense where your fingers are. You don't have to just touch it. You can switch them around just like on your phone. And Mercedes claims that the switches can handle temperatures well above the boiling temperature of water. So it won't matter if you get in a car and it's hot. And it also affects things like their crazy warning systems. You know, if you take your hands off the wheel, it used to warn you that you have your hands off the wheel. You'd have to grab the steering wheel and wiggle it a little so it knew you had it on. Well, now you won't have to wiggle it a little because when you put your hand on, it senses that your hands are there. Do some stuff May 27th on the internet so people can see what's out there. You can have capacitive touch, not a screen, but a steering wheel spoke. All kinds of stuff that you can mess with with your hands. Of course, I work on these things and I wonder how long would these things actually last until they break down and they don't sense or they sense something that's there that isn't there. <laughs> then it starts giving you all this information that you didn't ask for. Now imagine if I was driving one, I'm always moving my hands talking, right? <laughs> I'd be going bananas. Lights would be flashing everywhere. Well, we'll see what happens. It's new technology. It'll be out 2021 and people want to shut that kind of money out for a car to have toys like that. Yeah, go right ahead. I like my plain old steering wheel, my Toyota. That's a nice size, nice and comfy. I put leather over it because I like the feel of leather and you can get good stitch leather ones. That's all the feel that I want in my car. <laughs> Kaisel 17 says I'm thinking about getting a 2000 Lexus ES 300, 120,000 miles on it. What do you think? Is it going to be reliable? My wife's got a 2002 ES. Great cars. It can run a really long time. But consider 120,000 miles really isn't that much for a Lexus. They can last a lot longer than that. But the main thing is it's 20 years old. Two zero. Anything that's 20 years old, things can be worn. Things might be leaking. Things might be on the way out. With that particular car, don't pay too much. But it could be a good car. If a mechanic okays it, you gotta have a guy like me check it out because they're very complex cars. And in 10 minutes of me hooking up my $3,500 Autel scanning tool, I know so much information about that. And I've seen them. I got a Lexus out front here. I'm telling the guy to get rid of. I scanned through it and I said, this thing's been through the washing machine. It's not worth fixing up. Now, granted, that one has 250,000 miles on it and it's a V8, not a V6. It still looks great. It's just that it's never going to run right with 250,000 stupid modifications some idiot did to it. This guy didn't know. He didn't know anything about cars. He likes the way it looks, right? Well, you got to take a car like that to a mechanic to have them scan it through because they're so complex. There could be things going out that you don't want to mess with. Or it could be a good car. Just make sure you get it checked out. King is good, says, hey, my mom just got a new RAV4, 2.5 cylinder front wheel drive, non-hybrid, and with a key ignition. How does the eight-speed automatic hold up? All right, well, I just made a video on that. It's not up yet, but it'll be up soon on the eight-speed Toyota transmission. It is a fascinating transmission. It isn't new, new. Seven years ago, on a sport Lexus, they put that transmission in, the eight-speed, and those have held up quite well. So it's not like this is brand, brand new. It's been around for seven years. Now, it's a fascinating design because it's not one of those CVTs that I'm not in love with. It is a regular transmission with eight gears in it. And the coolest thing is, it's all computer controlled, so it's basically three transmissions in one. If your mother wants to get the best gas mods, she can have it on the economy setting. You just turn the switch to econ, the light comes on, says econ. You get the best gas mods, it'll lose a little acceleration, and it shifts not perfectly crisply. It's okay. If you want the best of both worlds, she could click it. Well, actually not click anything. Just leave it. When you start it up, it's a normal mode. Leave it on a normal mode. And it has the best of acceleration, gas mileage, and power all put together. And if your mother's a zippy driver, she wants to be zippy once in a while, you just push the sport button. Shifts real crisp. Later, has a lot more acceleration and is a lot more fun to drive. I just road tested one for a week and I was really impressed by it. Good gas mileage for the speed that it has, but really seamless shifts. And the reason they're seamless is because you got eight gears. So instead of having gears that are far apart and every time they shift, the RPM will drop 30, 40%. They can drop only 20% or so. So you don't even feel it. I put it in sport mode and drove it. My wife said, I can't even feel that thing shifting. And you really can't feel it shifting. So it's not new, new. The, the idea and the actual trannies have been out for seven years. So that's what I like about stuff is you don't buy something when it's new. Wait till it's been out a while. Well, this thing's been out for seven years. So David Master DD99 says, Scotty, a new code of my O2 Camry, PO440 EV system. What could it be? All right. That's a very common code that you get. It means that there is a leak somewhere in the EVAP system, which is an anti-pollution system. So generally the car will run perfectly fine. It's nothing you really got to worry about. First thing you want to do is just buy another gas cap. The gas caps can wear out. They leak. Then it's got a small leak. 
Or it might not be on tight enough. Always turn it so it clicks a couple of times on that car. Go get a new gas cap. It's a good idea to get them anyway. The other day, my wife forgot the gas cap and fell off. She left the thing open because it was thunderstorm was coming. And uh, I just went and got another one. I didn't get mad or anything. I just said, hey, Jesus, it's an 18-year-old gas cap on the car anyway. Might as well as buy a new one. Went to AutoZone, bought a new one, put it on. Probably a good idea to change them out every once in a while anyway. Now, if it's not that, it can be any small leaks anywhere. On that particular car, pop the hood. Look at the air filter. There are hoses that come off the air filter. Those are EVAP hoses. A lot of times they just fall off, especially if somebody changed the air filter and then that light came on. Go, you know, all you got to do is plug them back in. That's a very common thing. Past that, you're going to have to pay a pro like me with a smoke machine and a dealer level scan tool so you can do bi-directional testing of all the valves and sensors on the EVAP system. But on those, it's usually either the gas cap or somebody's knocked the hoses off by the air filter. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.